Hey guys, and welcome to Hadi Gastro. In today's video, we'll be exploring a very interesting topic, and that is adenoiditis. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of adenoiditis itself, let's do a quick review on what are the adenoids. So the adenoids are a patch of lymphatic tissue that sit in the back of the nasal cavity, as we can see here. So here's the nasal cavity, and this is where the adenoids are situated. So like the tonsils, the adenoids help keep our bodies healthy by trapping harmful bacteria and viruses that we breathe in or swallow. So I did actually do a video on tonsillitis, and I will put a link for it in the description, and it will be suggested on the right side of my screen above. And the adenoids, like the tonsils, are actually structures of lymphoid tissue that actually defend the body against bacteria and viruses that we come into contact with either via the nasal cavity or the oral cavity. So anything that we breathe in or that we take in via the food we eat that is contaminated with bacteria and viruses, the adenoids and tonsils actually help to fight against these bacteria and viruses from causing us harm. So the adenoids do very important work as infection fighters for babies and little kids especially. But they become less important as a child gets older and the body develops other ways to fight off pathogens. The adenoids are said to usually shrink after about 5 years of age and by the teenage years they often practically disappear. So something very interesting about the adenoids is that it's not a structure that is maintained throughout life. So usually until the age of 5, the adenoids are present. After that, as we head into our teens, they begin to shrink. And by the time we reach the end of our teen years, they practically disappear altogether. And that's why the adenoids are known as very important infection fighters, especially for babies and little kids. So now that we know what the adenoids are, let's take a closer look at what is adenoiditis. So adenoiditis is the condition wherein the child's adenoids get inflamed and enlarged after getting infected. So even though the adenoids are said to help filter our germs from our body, sometimes they can get overwhelmed by bacteria or viruses and become infected themselves. When this happens, the condition is called adenoiditis. So in a normal child, this is what the adenoids look like. So it's this lymphoid structure that is found here right at the posterior part of the nasal cavity. And its function, as is mentioned here, is to fight off against those bacteria and viruses. But sometimes, the adenoids can actually become overwhelmed, and these bacteria and viruses are so powerful that they actually penetrate through and infect and inflame the adenoids themselves. So when this happens, the enlarged, inflamed, and infected adenoid is now called adenoiditis. Itis means inflammation, an adenoid pertaining to the adenoid tissue. So when we have an adenoiditis, we have an inflammation and infection of these adenoids. So moving on, let's explore some causes of this disease. So the vast majority of adenoiditis cases are usually viral. However, some bacteria are also said to cause this infection. So the viruses that may cause adenoiditis include the adenoviruses, the rhinoviruses, and the paramyxoviruses. And the bacterial causes include Streptococcus pyogenes, which is actually responsible for causing strep throat. If you guys do have some time, I suggest you give that video a watch because it's a very important pathogenic agent, which not only contributes to the development of an adenoiditis, but also the development of a tonsillitis. So continuing bacterial causes, we have Streptococcus pneumoniae, Moraxala cateralis, and various species of Staphylococcus, including Staphylococcus aureus. So these are our usual suspects when we look for that specific kind of organism which is responsible for the development of this disease. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of adenoiditis. So symptoms of adenoiditis can vary depending on what is causing the infection, which means a bacteria or a virus. But the usual symptoms include a sore throat, a stuffy nose, swollen glands in the neck, ear pain and other ear problems, breathing through the mouth, speaking with a nasal sound as if you are speaking with a pinched nose, a difficulty in sleeping, and snoring or sleep apnea. And sleep apnea is actually a condition where you stop breathing 
for a short amount of time during your sleep. So something very important that is worth mentioning in this disease is that because the adenoids are found at the posterior wall of the nasal cavity, they actually affect a lot of the structures which are closely related to this area. So if we have inflammation and infection here, these patients will have a sore throat. The stuffy nose will come from a blockage because now when these adenoids inflame, they actually cause quite a significant nasal obstruction. So these patients will have that stuffy nose. They will also have swollen glands in their neck. So these are inflamed lymph nodes that may be present in the neck region as well as the supraclavicular region. So we have ear pain and other ear problems. And this is due to that mass actually affecting the drainage from the eustachian tube. So the eustachian tube is that channel or passage from the middle ear into the nasopharynx. And when we have an adenoiditis, we can actually cause an obstruction within the eustachian tube, which can actually lead to ear pain and increased pressure within the ear and hearing loss and pain within the ear cavity. So these patients will also breathe through their mouth because if this inflammation becomes significant, it'll actually completely cause the nasal obstruction and then these patients will have to breathe through their mouths. So these patients will also sound very nasal when they're speaking and that's due to that nasal obstruction again. And they may actually snore or have sleep apnea. And this is also due to that increase in the size of these adenoids pushing against all these various structures. So these patients may also have a nasal discharge and it might be thick and creamy or pus-like. And a secondary infection may also develop during the primary adenoid infection as well. Because remember we said the adenoids actually help us to fight off infections and if now we have this man down, he's unable to protect us against other pathogenic agents. So we can actually have a super infection or a secondary infection that may develop in this disease as well. So something very interesting about this disease is that many of the patients when they suffer from adenoiditis have a very specific look and this is actually called the adenoid face. So adenoid faces, also known as the long face syndrome, refers to the long open mouth face of children with adenoid hypertrophy, which means the inflamed and enlarged adenoids. So hypertrophy of the nasopharyngeal pad of the lymphoid tissues, which is the adenoids, is the most common cause for the nasal obstruction in children. So as we mentioned in the slide before, the inflammation and the enlargement of these adenoids will go on to cause a nasal obstruction in these patients and it's actually the number one cause of nasal obstruction in younger kids. So the specific adenoid phase is defined as the open mouth appearance. So because these children are usually breathing through their mouths now and not their nose, they will have the open mouth appearance. Their noses are usually narrowed, so they have a narrowed nose. They have a shorter upper lip, so their upper lip is much shorter than the lower lip. A narrow palate, so as we can see here, the palate is narrowed. And a high palatal vault, so the palate actually goes back quite high. And they will also have dental crowding, so all their teeth very close and squished up together. And as we can see in this image, it's actually an x-ray which shows a completely enlarged adenoid. So usually the adenoid needs to be a very small little cavity. But here we see it's completely taking up the entire posterior part of the nasal cavity, probably causing a very significant nasal obstruction in this patient. And we see her typical long face and features. The diagnosis of adenoiditis. So the first step in the diagnosis is performing a physical examination to determine where the infection is located. So in addition to localizing the infection to the posterior part of the nasal cavity, we will also look for that specific adenoid face. We can then do a throat examination using swabs to obtain samples of bacteria or other organisms in the affected area. So the throat can actually be swabbed and these samples can be sent off to a lab to see the specific types of bacteria or viruses that are actually present and that led to the development of this disease. So blood tests can also be used to determine the presence of organisms. So if we have a bacterial infection, we will have a high white blood cell count together with a high neutrophil count. And if we have a viral caused adenoiditis, we will have an increase in the white blood cell count as well as the lymphocyte count. 
So x-rays, as we mentioned in the slide before, of the head and neck will also be done to determine the size of the adenoids and the extent of infection. So as we can see here, this is actually quite an enlarged adenoid as well. And finally, the optical fiber endoscopy can also be used to confirm the diagnosis in case of doubts, and this is done by directly visualizing the inflamed adenoid. And this is actually what this procedure looks like. So we have a scope which is inserted into the nasal cavity and travels throughout the nasal cavity. And we have a good view here of the nasopharyngeal area. So as we can see here, the adenoids are enlarged and the airway here is actually seen to be reduced quite significantly. And this is what happens when these adenoids enlarge, they cause this nasal obstruction, which contributes to the great difficulty in breathing in these patients. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of adenoiditis. So in cases of viral adenoiditis, treatment with analgesics or antipyretics is often sufficient. So analgesics are pain medications and antipyretics are anti-fever medications. And this is usually sufficient for these patients and their infection will actually clear in less than two weeks. But in cases of bacterial adenoiditis, this may need treatment with antibiotics such as amoxicillin and clavulanic acid or a cephalosporin. And in cases of extreme adenoid hypertrophy, an adenoidectomy may be performed to completely remove the adenoids. So the following points are some more widely accepted reasons for having an adenoidectomy. So if the patient has sleep apnea or periods at night when their child stops breathing, if their child has a trouble in swallowing, or if there's a significant blockage of the nasal passage and breathing is very uncomfortable for these patients, then an adenoidectomy is recommended. So as we can see here, this is the before surgery internal view. And then as we can see here, the adenoids are completely removed and the patient is able to breathe much better. And that brings us to the end of this video on adenoiditis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.